Welcome FISPA members to the 2020 FISPA annual business meeting. You are muted. Um, I will do a Q&A at the end. Please enter them in the question box on your webcast viewer. And uh, so this meeting of the FSPA is called to order at 12 p.m. Eastern time on May 12, 2020. So welcome. Obviously 2020 is a year we won't forget. I hope you're navigating the new rules of life and business and managing your stress and making out okay. But I really appreciate you taking the time to join me here today. It was definitely a difficult decision to um, cancel the FISPA conference. As you can imagine, a uh, lot went into that decision. There was no playbook what, for what to do, and the conference is a big part of what FISPA is. This was also our first time in Lexington with a supplier welcome tour all planned and the offsite party at Lockmasters. And as always, the opportunity for everybody to be together. So it was hard to realize we we're actually going to cancel it. And back on March 16th, when the board agreed to, we were still concerned of which way this would go. Would it be a short term event and life would go back to normal in a couple of weeks? Or were we really going into a full blown pandemic that would change everything? I don't think any of us imagined that six weeks later, we're suddenly talking about phase one of coming out of this. So it's a year we won't forget. Um, usually a first order of business in a fiscal meeting is to vote on the new slate of directors. But in keeping with the bylaw change we made in January of 2019, uh, the board members that were approved at the conference in Charlotte for two year terms, and they will remain in office until the end of the December conference in 2021. So I have the list of the board members up on the screen. Uh, Carl Schreiber resigned from the board. As most of you know, he took over Absolute Financial uh, Services and he's focusing on his business and his family and he was replaced by Matt Lyons of Fenco. Uh, so when you get a chance, make sure you welcome Matt to the board. Um, we also want to thank Carl for being on the board for four years. He was uh, a great voice of reason and logic. He's a great problem solver. And if you know Carl, you know his sense of humor and, and just his complete sarcasm made serving with him fun and entertaining even as we got our FISPA work done. The FISPA officers serve a one-year term. So the board will be electing those officers in an upcoming board meeting. If you are ever interested in being on the board, please let me know. <coughs> All right, let's go on to the executive director's report, the overall outlook for the association. The 2019 year came in as about 27,000 K um, net income. And this year we look to be on track for about the same amount. I'll be forever grateful that I had communicable disease coverage as part of our event insurance. Uh, it meant making that decision to cancel the conference and do the safe thing for the members would not put FISPA at risk of not being able to survive. Uh, we are being reimbursed for about 5,000 in unrecoverable expenses, things like brochure printing and mailing and the deposits that were not refunded plus the uh, approximately $70,000 in lost net income based on our conference projections. Uh, the proof of loss has been notarized and submitted to the underwriters as of April 21st. Uh, we're waiting for payment, as with most of you, I'm sure, in your life of business and insurance companies. You know, nothing's confirmed until you get the check, but we seem to be in a good place right now. The 2019 year-end revenue uh, just so you know, came in from 93,000 in dues, 35,000 of advertising in the newsletter and directory, and annual conference revenue at 182,000. For the 2020 year end, the dues will be around 88,000, uh, the advertising total about 39,000, and the conference revenue from the insurance claim will add about $70,000 to the bottom line. So all that looks good. Membership is currently at 191 members. Um, we're certainly hoping that the COVID-19 debacle does not cause any of our members to decide to retire or go out of business. But if you know of anybody that could be a FISPA member, as always, uh, please send them to me. 
So I'll also talk about the committees here. We have six committees. As you can see on the screen, uh, each one of them serves a very specific purpose that helps run the organization. If you would like to be on one of these committees, just uh, send an email to bj at fspa.com. I also would like to give a huge thank you to our sponsors. Even though we had to cancel, uh, these members made a huge commitment to the conference, and many of them had actually sent in their payments, and some of them were still waiting for refunds. Uh, we had an overwhelming response against this year, and we had over $30,000 in sponsorships, which make a huge difference. So I'd like you to take a minute to look at that list and just, uh, again, thank everyone that contributes to making the the conference a great success. And also to the exhibitors, um, we had a great show floor planned this year. Uh, I only had two booths left to sell before we would be sold out on March 16th when we canceled. So again, thank you to all the suppliers who commit the time and resources to come to FISPA. Highlights of the year, uh, one of them would have been the welcome tour uh, with the uh, tours of Audio Authority and Sergeant Greenleaf, as well as little bourbon tour, some fun and refreshment. And we had an incredible event on uh, set up for Tuesday night at Lockmasters that they were hosting for us. Um, I was so happy that we were going to Lexington for the first time in FISPA conference history. Because we have venues picked for 2021 and 2022, the next option for coming back to Lexington will be 2023. Uh, other highlights of the year, we've continued the benchmarking surveys and the summary articles. So if you have any ideas of anything that you would like to have a survey done on, please let me know. We continued the webinar program with five webinars in the past 12 months. For those of you that didn't get to attend, uh, the uh, COVID-19 uh, forgiveness, loan forgiveness, and reopening webinar was on Friday. That is now up on the new website. It is not behind a login, so if you or any of your people would like to go take a look at that, that's up and running. Uh, the other highlight is we've continued to increase sales of ads in the newsletter and the membership directory. We are over 35,000 this year. And finally, the big project for this year we completed was the rebuild and refresh of the FISPA website. Of course, this was a bigger project than any of us anticipated and certainly took longer than we ever thought it would. But our go live date of Monday held and I am honestly and completely proud of the new website. My thanks goes out to the team at Get the Clicks for all the support and the work they did. If you haven't taken a look, just go to fspa1.com and see the new website. Completing the website also allows us to move forward with the service collaboration. You know, there was a group that came to Orlando in January a year ago, paying their own way to set up the framework of this. And we will be, uh, I'll set up a demo of the uh, capability on the website and go over uh, where that was left and we can work on coming up new uh, with new rules to move the national service forward. So looking forward to that. The plans for the coming year, um, again, the revamp of the website, yes, it's up, but we want to continue to make improvements, and those changes will be based on recommendations from you. So please do go online, look around, let me know what you think. Uh, the next highlight will be bringing the National Service Collaboration into reality and develop the features and functions to make that out, you know, work like the original outline we saw. Uh, watch for that. And also, I am going to look again at the possibility of association health plans and association retirement plans uh, for FISPA to offer its members. I haven't been able to find anything that really made me think, yeah, that's the way we need to go. I will continue to look for that. And I know I have to get it out there by August or September, or most of you who have a January renewal, it won't work well for you. So I'm working on that. Uh, next up is I'd like to let those of you that do uh, know that Woody Alderman was our Hall of Fame winner for 2020. I thought this was a great picture of him. Okay, I'll go to the real picture. Um, so he didn't get his award presented in person. Um, so Woody, if you're listening, uh, you're not off the hook yet. There is a presentation ceremony or a roast of some type in your future at some FISPA event. 
Um, and just like it isn't a FISPA event, we don't have a golf outing, we don't have a hospitality suite, but Susan wanted to make sure I let you know that she was ready to bartend this year and can't wait till we get to Denver next year. So mark your calendars with those dates and uh, we'll be starting registration for that probably around November 1st and start again and maybe we'll actually get to have a conference this time. So thank you to all of you that are with us today. Uh, FISPA would not exist, of course, without the members. So I thank you for all of your support. And I'm always interested to hear your take on what is happening. So drop me an email or call me whenever you officially. So with that, I will turn this over to Bryce Good of Washington Security. Uh, good day to all. My name is Bryce Good, like BJ said. I uh, hope everybody's staying safe and dealing with the crazy times that we're having right now. First off, I'd like to give BJ a big thanks for all that she does, especially with all the craziness that's going on. She's handled this situation extremely well. So thank you, BJ. Uh, FISPA is welcome. extremely happy to give three scholarships in the amount of $1,500 each to the three recipients. Uh, there should be a screen up for it, and uh, the winners are just in random order. They're in alphabetical order by last name, so it's not first, second, third, whatever. It's just here are the three. Uh, first off, we have Allison Curse. Her mother, Catherine Curse, works at Security Pro Systems. Allison is a sophomore at Cornell University, majoring in economics and wants to be a sports Also on the Student Athlete Advisory Committee, and she is part of the Family Reading Partnership as a volunteer reading to kids. So congratulations, Allison. Next up, we have Carson Nichols. His mother, Mary Nichols, works at Circa Tech. Uh, Carson will be going to Dakota County Technical School for Heavy Construction Equipment. He is currently attending community college studying diesel mechanics at this time. Uh, in high school, Carson was the football manager and the hockey manager. Carson was also the trap team captain. Trap is in play uh, pigeons. So congratulations to Carson as well. Uh, up next, we have Abby Peterson. Her father, Stephen Peterson, works at Case Financial. Abby is a senior in high school and will be attending Minnesota State University Moorhead to study elementary education. Uh, Abby is in choir, and she is a member of the varsity tennis team. Uh, Abby has all, or is, well, has been a part of Girl Scouts from first grade until present, where she's a uh, camp. To Abby. All right. So thank you very much for that. I really appreciate it, Bryce. And look at those smiling faces. Those are great kids and we're so proud to be able to do this for them. All right, we're up to any comments, questions, any new business. Uh, I do have you mute, muted, so you'll have to put your questions in the uh, question box on your webcast viewer. I do have one from Jean Polito. Will the 2023 conference be back in Lexington? I hope so. I mean, the thing to do now is we've got to go back through and recircle and uh, get a new contract for the venue and for the Lexington Center. So we will actually um, make another uh, attempt at that and securing that and seeing all the changes that have been done to the convention center. They're on a major uh, revamping of that. And we knew the space we had by the time we would be going back in 2023 the exhibit space we originally contracted for will have changed completely. Um, so again, if that all works out, uh, we'll go there. If not, we're going to try to find a different venue in Lexington. But um, yeah, it would be it would be amazing. It would also be great for me, as you pointed out. It'd be like Groundhog Day in that you know we had the tour figured out and the offsite figured out, and we knew what golf course to play at. So it'll kind of shortcut some of my planning. I wouldn't mind that a bit. So anybody else have any other questions? Okay, anybody else? That's it. All right. Well, 
then I officially will adjourn uh, this meeting of the uh, FISPA business meeting for 2020 at, uh, what time is it, 12.15 uh, Eastern. And all of you take care and stay well. And thank you for joining us today.